All right, so we're starting off uh, this new little section, right? And what we're gonna end up doing is moving to a different direction. We'll start talking about the influence of an area or a neighborhood on crime. So take for a moment a little bit to think about uh, the neighborhood or the area that you live in, right? So, you know, wherever your home is, um, if you have a home, right, is, you know, you are right here. And as is typical, unless you live out in the boonies somewhere, right, you know, you may have someone, uh, you know, next to you, next to you here, in this like little square, right? And there are all these people that live inside, right? And people frequent these areas, right? You know, we see that people move, you know, they're going out to work this way. Maybe they're going this way to a gas station. They move into here. Uh, you know, maybe they move out in this way, right? This could also be seen as like an apartment complex um, of behavior linked together. The point being, right, is that we have these overlapping and exchanges uh, within a community. So and again, unless you live up in the boonies or in the desert or something all by yourself, right? You know, you uh, we typically have to deal with other people, right? Uh, we know that when we deal with people in these kinds of situations, you know, there's sort of, there's not ever really anything that's ever spoken or understood, right? But in certain areas, right, there are understood, you know, behaviors, and mechanics or you know rules governing what's going on right so if you think about like what would this be like at an apartment right so at like an apartment what kind of rules come up right you know no well, first one is like not to be too loud right yeah you can have like a little volume if you're really you know listening to a banger or something like that you're listening to a sledgehammer right peter gabriel cranking up to 11. you know that might be fine for like a one-off right but it may not be like you know too big of a deal right something like that so you know loudness is definitely key you know also depending on uh you know like banging on floors and walls and stuff like that you know, maybe there are rules and time limits for doing laundry if there's a shared, you know, laundromat or something like that. Um, there could also be rules and restrictions on kids play. Kids play, so if there's like a playground or something, you know, like maybe kids shouldn't play, you know, during this set of time or they need to be in at a certain time. Same could also be true for, you know, common spaces. You know, like, hey, no, no, no rough, uh, rowdy behavior, you know, nothing like that. You know, maybe, maybe there's something, <sighs> excuse me, that's, uh, that's going on, right? Um, also, probably in the general, right, you know, you sign, you, you know, like waivers that you're not going to disturb neighbors. And to the extent that is possible, you know, you're also going to, you know, keep your apartment clean on the outside. Uh, so that people don't have to look at it. You know, they don't want you putting up political signs. Um, you know, the only thing that I saw political, like I live in an apartment complex. The only thing I saw that was like kind of political, right, was that uh, there was some, like, and it wasn't even political, it was like when Kobe died, like they had like a bunch of Kobe jerseys hanging up in their window um, forever. Other than that, you know, there's not really like anything, right? So all of these, right, are sort of like understood rules and they kind of go in and they are sort of like regulating behavior. They're not ever fully communicated, but these behaviors, these actions um, exist, right? So in this case, what happens though if there are violations, right, in the community? So someone's being delinquent, so we have violations or delinquency you know, what's going on with that. What happens if this goes away? And we can no longer uh, regulate or control behavior. Further, what happens 
if there are conflicting views, that's, whoa, that's new. If there are conflicting views about what should happen or what is or is not expected, and what happens, right, if there is no willingness to intervene. into like behavior. So if there's no reason, if there's no like rule, if there's no nothing like that, you know, what exactly, you know, happens in those situations, right? So what the series of videos is gonna do is that we'll be going to explore this a little bit and we'll uh, examine the role that social disorganization in areas plays in regulating behavior. So that's what we're gonna end up covering. These are kinds of questions that we should be asking ourselves as we you know, work through the theories this week. And uh, until then,